Hey everybody, Craig Kester here with Keep Watching, R2AWatches.com, the Pramsius watch company, and a list of a number of other things that make me sound far more important than I am. And I'm not going to try to list them all this week. First of all, I want to mention that we are trying to get back to a consistent time that we do the Keep Watching show. I want to apologize yet again for last week. Uh, we've only been doing this a few months, and it's a learning experience for us, especially with this whole Facebook Live thing. Um, last week I was up in the wee hours of the morning. I'm sure for those of you who, know, who watched, you noticed that trying to get this done mostly because I had been traveling and been so busy. Um, and then we found out as anybody who watched the show knows that we didn't have any sound. Um, so we're hoping we corrected, corrected, corrected. I, I wouldn't win on wheel of fortune with corrected. Um, I don't if you know what story I'm referring to then you know what story I'm referring to. Anyway, um, we hopefully have corrected that and you are hearing the dulcet tones of Craig Hester uh, this time. Uh, what else? Well, first of all, I want to mention right up front, well, I should go ahead and give my commercial that I always give. This is Keep Watching. It is our <laughs> weekly show. I'm really big on the air quotes in this show. This is, it is our weekly show uh, uh, done by r2awatches.com. Uh, and if you're watching it on Facebook, be sure and like the page r2awatches.com or Vostok Europe USA. Uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe. Obviously on YouTube, we load it after the show has been done. Um, I want to say a big thing, a, a big shout out to everybody who backed the uh, Fall to Berlin Wall Watch, either with pr a pre-order on Pramzius.com or through Kickstarter. We ended up 141% funded on Kickstarter, so the watch is definitely going to be built. We thank everyone who has shown their support for this and backed the project, and um, we're really excited about it. We can't wait to get started on production. I will tell you, and I don't know if this is going to happen, and I'm more than open to feedback. Um, we are still working out whether we can technically do this. We are thinking about offering an upgrade if you want to look at it that way. I do have a great deal of faith uh, in the uh, in the NH35 movement and how bulletproof and solid that movement is. But there are some people who really do truly love the Swiss. So we are looking into whether we can do an upgrade to a 2824. Um, I don't know 100% yet whether that's going to happen. So I'm just throwing that out there. You're welcome to make comments. Tell me if you think that's a crazy idea or if you'd be interested in that or whatever. Um, so we are going to start production soon, and we are really excited about that. This week, we have something really interesting and new that we are very excited about. Um, it, I'm going to assume that some of you are familiar with what this what you're looking at here in front of me is, and some of you may not be, but we found a manufacturer of these really cool clocks in Ukraine. And in fact, this is going to be the only thing I'm going to talk about on the Keep Watching show this week. Uh, hopefully within the next few days, I'm going to be back on another show with Tim Temple at Talk About Watches. And there we'll be talking about more traditional things like I think our next one, we're going to focus on the Caspian Sea Monster and another one of the uh, Mechanica Gretz uh, hand-painted watches. But anyway, for this show, for uh, Keep Watching, we have got, found this manufacturer in Ukraine who hand-builds these Nixie tube clocks. And I gotta tell you, they are wicked cool. I vaguely remember like seeing a picture of it somewhere or whatever, um, but we found this guy and Abe decided to get one to see what they looked like and to get a feel for them. So we got one in and I went, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, that is just too cool. We have got to do these for r2awatches.com. Now I want to be clear, we're not their distributor. This is a very small thing we're doing. This is nothing like a relationship we would have, say for instance, with Bostock or Perstoransky. But Abe and I just thought these were cool and we thought you would think so too. And so we're bringing a few in for uh, you guys to, to, to pick up if you find it interesting. Uh, I would say that the thing that, you know, would make them interesting coming from us is what you already uh, uh, look for and, and why you would buy watches from us. Is obviously, we're going to stand behind them. It's going to have the two-year warranty. Um, you're not going to have to worry about importing anything. We're going to be doing all the importing and so forth. So I'm going to talk about this one that's in front of me. So to clarify, though, right up front, I want to make it clear that this particular one that you're looking at here that we're using as the example for the Keep Watching show 
This one, they were actually, the manufacturer was actually out of, this was the last one. And we just so happened to be that that's the one we picked up to look at. We have three other styles that we're picking up in a very low quantity. And if you haven't signed up for the newsletter at info at r2awatches.com or through r2awatches.com, this is why you want to right now, because we're going to be sending out an email alert um, when we're ready to start selling these. Um, and we are really excited about this because again, it's just different, it's just cool. Let me explain, ah, that, yeah, right there, that was just so cool. I'll talk about that in a minute. So um, let me explain what this is. If you don't know what Nixie tubes are, and that's N-I-X-I-E, let me uh, try my best to explain what that is. And then uh, to talk about why this is coming from Ukraine in, uh, in particular, which of course fits into our wheelhouse, uh, even though we have expanded beyond Eastern Europe and Russia in recent times. But this comes from, uh, you know, from the area of the world that we tend to bring in uh, timepieces from. A Nixie tube is a what's called a cold cathode tube. Uh, and the reason the cold is important is, well, you can touch it. It's not hot. A little slight, just a little slight warmth. Uh, they don't actually get above 104 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, even in a room with no ventilation or whatever. Um, so it's it's cold, and that is important in that it separates it or defines it separately from what you would think of as a more traditional vacuum tube. Even though this looks like a vacuum tube uh, that, that would have to have a heat transfer uh, to to get it to work, it's not. It's a Nixie tube. Um, and what what a Nixie tube is, 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 first of all, it's obviously a glass tube, okay? And then what makes it what it is, is there's a, there's a wire mesh base. And then running from out from that base, there is actually a formed metal piece <laughs> that is in the shape of a number that goes all the way out. So actually what you're looking at here, when you look at the display, the, the numbers are actually don't, it's, it's not like a traditional, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not like a traditional display on a, what is the word LCD. I'm looking for? What? LCD. Yeah, LCD or LCD, or, but that's not the exact LED. word. LED. LED, but it's the display that you have, digital, digital display, I guess is the right word. Anyway, um, thank you, Abe. It is, it is not um, your traditional digital display that you're used to seeing. Let's go back to the late 60s, in the 70s, the classic look or like your alarm clock, which nobody has anymore because they all use their cell phones, but where the number changes by the fact that one of the uh, little cutouts in the digital display will move to a different position, and then that change is what the number looks like. And if that's really clear, you're more impressive than I am. But anyway, here, the, the, these metal configurations are actually, there's one for each number, which that alone just makes this so cool to me. So when the time changes, by the way, we didn't set this to any particular time. We just pulled it out of the box and this is the time that was on it. Um, so when the time changes, you see, you see the eight here, when it goes to nine o'clock, the, the time, the, the, it's going to actually move, the, the power is going to move to the next configured piece of metal, which is shaped like a nine. That's so cool. This is very retro. Now, here's, here's the thing. Nixie tubes were actually made from 1955, roughly, uh, until the, the mid-90s. They were an alternative to vacuum tubes. They were used, actually, not typically in clocks or something like this. They were used in, actually, usually in more high-end um industrial type equipment because they were fairly expensive. In fact, one of the ironies of the fact that the, the resurgence and, and current new popularity of Nixie, Nixie tubes is they are tending to be used in clocks like this, but when they were first being produced, they were actually skewed not to be used in clocks or other household items because the tubes were too expensive. Um, there is a company now that's actually started making Nixie tubes again in 2012. Um, however, these are um, what you would refer, what we would refer to in the watch business as new old stock in that there were so many made during the period of time that the, the, the 30 some odd year period of time that they were built, um, that there's actually stock, there's new old stock 
and it happens to be in Ukraine. In fact, we did some research on this. And if you try to, if you look up mixing tubes and you, you talk about trying to buy them, whether you want to buy the tubes themselves or something that they're being used in like this, it seems like Ukraine is the only place you can get them. Uh, we did some research on that. It's, it, part of that is because during the Soviet Union, they had actually a very big apparatus that built mixing tubes for a, a number of different functions. Um, so there's a lot of these available in Ukraine. So this guy um, that we're using, what was the name of the company? The radio something or the... While Abe is looking that up, I will keep talking. Um, so this guy actually, he hand makes these. So he designed them all. And every different design is really cool. Um, so it, you're not going to be disappointed whichever one you pick. Um, go ahead. What is it? Did you find it? Electric, electro radio measuring instruments. Electro radio, radio measuring, measuring instruments. Uh, uh, it actually sounds a lot like the institute that Igor Zablowski was in when he first got into the watch business. And that's a whole other story and a, another video on the watch. But anyway, um, he decided to go into the business of making these clocks. He hand makes the wooden components. Obviously, it's being driven by a fairly standard uh, you know, clock configuration that would normally uh, drive a digital LED or LCD clock, as we settled that issue earlier. Okay, so now I'm actually going to go through how the clock works. I'm going to go through all the functions, how you set it, and so forth. Now, you're going to get instructions that go with this, and truthfully, what I'm about to do is absolutely unnecessary for this video. I just want to do it because it's really cool and you're going to really like how this thing works. It's, it's, it's the ingenuity that went into being able to take these tubes, which were not necessarily intended for this and turn them into this functioning clock is it's, it's fascinating. Um, and again, you've got a, you've got a, a, a movement in here, I guess movement's not the right word, but you've got a, you've got a, uh, the, the, the like board a that, that drives the clock is, is your typical digital clock. It's going to be, it's similar to setting your, say your, your alarm clock, but not exactly. And it's fascinating how this thing handles. Now, first of all, you've got two buttons on the back. Um, it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be something tied to uh, our part of the world if it didn't have a red button. You know, don't touch the red button. I don't know why I think that's funny. Um, there's a red button and there's a black button on the back. Okay. And those are the buttons that you use to move through the functions, to set the clock, and so forth. Okay. Now, you got your four tubes. You're going to notice that in the middle, there's a little light. This is not... A countdown timer for oh that's when it changes the date again. It just makes me smile. It's uh, so cool because now it's gonna now wait and it goes back. It's just so cool. Now you don't have it doesn't have to do that, and I'll show you momentarily how you can have it where it doesn't do that. Why anybody would not want this clock to do this every two minutes? I have no idea, but you can turn that off. Okay, this little thing is not beeping because this is a countdown timer to when you push the red button and the missiles go off. No. This is telling you that the clock is keeping time right now. This is your standard resting mode, okay? If that's beeping, it's not beeping, it doesn't make a noise. If that's flashing, then you are in regular time mode. Now, I'm going to push the red button, and I promise you no one in another country is going to die while I do this. So I, I'm just excited to run with that joke, and it's really not funny. Okay, so I push the red button. Now, notice... The center little light up display thingy bulb, um, that's a technical term by the way, light up display thingy, went solid. What that means is you can now change the hour. Okay, what's important to point out is there's no AM PM indicator on this like you have on a regular alarm clock. So when you're changing the hour, so actually technically this is set for 8.56 AM Okay, because we're on a 12-12 mode. But when you're setting the hour, you actually do it on the 24-hour clock. Whether you want the watch to be displayed in 24 hours or in 12 hours, because there's no AM, PM. So if I come back around to where we were, I've just set it to 8 AM. If I wanted to set 
for 8 p.m., I would go to 2,800 hours. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm setting the hour. And you can see, it's kind of hard to tell here, but, you, but how it's moving back and forth up and down the tube because, like I was saying before, the tubes, you can see how they, they're not lined up because it's a different number that's actually illuminating in the tube. I, this is just, I, I could play with this all day. Okay, so I'm back here. Now, I'm going to push the red button again. Now, you saw how a little bit of delay, so understand there's, going to, there's, there's a little time lag between when you push the button and it does exactly what it's supposed to do in the next rotation. You saw the light went off. Now we can change the minutes. Okay? So it doesn't really matter. Like I said, this wasn't set for the accurate time anyway, so we'll set it back to 8.20 a.m. All right. I push the button again, and now you see that there's a 1 here. There's a 1 here. Okay, why is that there? Whenever you see a 1 or a 0, only in this particular tube, it is a toggle switch to change one of the, the um, functions of the clock to a way that you want it to be. All right, so in this particular case, changing to 0 turns off this backlight, these nice blue backlights that are really cool, um, but maybe you don't like them. Maybe you're just not into having it look like that. You want it to be more subtle. It turns off the blue lights. Turning it back to one, very binary here, zero, one, you're showing the lights on the back. Um, and in fact, if you have the blue lights on, they will shut off at 11 p.m. at night and they come back on when a seven, seven in the morning. Now, not everybody's necessarily going to sleep from 11 to seven, but the main idea is that that backlight's going to go off so it doesn't bother you while you're trying to sleep. Uh, during those hours. If you're second shift or third shift, there's nothing I can do to help you. All right, so now we're going to move on. We, we toggle back and forth. I'm going to leave the blue lights on because I like the blue lights. Um, now I'm going to move forward again. Now I'm at the year, and I could change the year by pushing the black button. Okay, and boy, I'm going to be doing this for a little while. I don't, know how, I don't even know how high up this goes. This is going to go up to more years than I'm going to be alive. That's for absolutely certain, because I don't think I'm going to live to 2100. So we're coming back around. And we're back to this year, 2018. All right. Then you push it again. And you're now setting the date. Now, keep in mind that this is flip-flopped for us Americans. Uh, Europeans, you know, they do it in a different order than we do. So you're actually talking about this is the month and this is the day. Excuse me. Yeah, this, this is the month. This is the day. Whereas if this were a U.S. clock built for the U.S., it would be flip-flopped and the day would be here and the month would be, or excuse me, the month would be here and the day would be here. Anyway, so notice that. Um, you see the light is on. The light is on. That means we're changing the day. Excuse me. Changing the month. See, I even got it backwards. We're changing the month. Light is off. We're changing the date. Parse it again. Now we've got another toggle switch. Now you know how I notice how I mentioned earlier that there's the, the, the mode where the date is going to show up every two minutes for five seconds and then it's going to go back to timekeeping. This is where you change that mode. So if I press the black button and let it go to zero, now you don't see anything here telling you this, but when you let that go to zero, then you've now turned off the date showing up, you know, every two minutes. Press it again. Now the date will show up again. Now I press the button again. Now I am where you will decide whether you want it to display in 12-hour timekeeping or in 24-hour timekeeping. So I'm just for, for, for uh, I was going to say something in giggles, but I'll try to avoid being 
uh, vulgar in our weekly show. Um, I want to leave it on 24, press the button. Oh, and it still is on 24 because we set it for 8 a.m. All right. Uh, so if it were, when it, when this gets past, it would, it would actually then climb past 12 and to 13, 14, 15, so forth and so on. So you can set it for 24, you can set it for 12. Anyway, those are all of the functions. I love how the little light tells you that you're in the timekeeping mode, how it changes to show you which one you're going to be setting to. Um, I love how this shows you how it moves back and forth through the, the different uh, cutouts to give you the, 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 the illuminated uh, one that needs to be illuminated. And it's just, you're, you're going to have fun just playing with this when you get it. If I left anything out, Abe. I wonder if it's a perpetual calendar. I don't know. I was looking at that, too. Why does it ask for the year? I know. I think it might be a perpetual calendar. So let's look. All right, so I'm going to go back to where we set. And I noticed that it only went to 30 days. Um, so it went. Um, you can tell we just got this because we're figuring out. So there's the year. All right. It knows that it's, it's, the year is 18. It knows that this is 11, the 11th day of the fourth month. So if I go to set, that's the, that's the month. I got to go back to, well, give me a month that has 31 days in it. Uh, May, right? March, April, May. Right? I don't know what months they have 31 days in them. Oh, we know December, December has 31 days. So, okay. So if we go to changing the date. Let's see if it has 31 days here. Uh, yeah, that's cool. This is a perpetual calendar too. I, I have, I am so geeked up. I am so geeked up. Oh my, I, I will, I will own one of these. I will own more than one of these. I will have two or three of these sitting around in different places in both my office and my house. Okay. So now, we 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 go back. All right, I'm gonna go back and I want to change. I want to change the month again. So I gotta I gotta roll all the way back around. I gotta see it do this again. This is too cool. Okay, sorry guys. I'm just playing, but you know, play along with me. You too can do this at home. You just have to buy one. Okay, so here we go. We're back now. I'm gonna change the month. Now we want to go back to four, which is a current month, which we know has 30 days in it. Press it again. Change the date. Scooby dooby doo, scooby dooby dooby doo. Strangers in the night exchanging clothing. 30 and back to one. It's got a perpetual calendar. Okay. If you don't buy one of these, I, you're not one of my customers because I, I don't know any of my customers who won't. You already own one, is the only reason you're not going to pick up one of these. Because I can't imagine any of my customers who get geeked up about watches like I do, who love Vostok Europe, who love the fact that we put pieces of the Berlin Wall on the crown of this watch, who love the fact that it's the first watch in space on the wrist of Yuri Gagarin, who love all the things about what make our watches different and special, how you could not want one of these. I just, I can't even fathom it. So you will, you, you will buy one of these. Anyway, I'll have two or three of these in my collection. So that is going through the specific functions of this incredibly cool clock. So we are going to be making these available very soon. Really cool uh, wood um, case configurations on this, handmade by the company and is it doing it again? Yeah, just did it. I love the way it changes. I just, you can tell I'm just really geeked up about that, can't you, the way it changes the date. Um, you don't have to worry about any heat problems. By the way, these tubes, they last up to 200,000 hours. So you're not having to worry about the tube going bad on you. Um, that is not gonna be an issue. It's a very simple, simple, straightforward digital clock mechanism in here. So these are gonna be a very robust, um, I will say that, you know, you're going to want to be somewhat careful about the fact uh, about where you put these or, you know, making sure they're on a stable shelf or something, because this is a glass tube. So it, it is breakable. I mean, that needs to be made clear. Uh, I don't, yeah, I'm trying to think if I finished all the story about Nixie tubes. I mean, they're, they're just cool. I think the thing is, 
these clocks have become popular again. As we all know, we've kind of gotten burned out a little on the modern look of electronics. So this is kind of a throwback. You know, this is, um, this is I, I, I like the digital idea, but I want something different. Um, I, clearly, this has what would, would be associated with the steampunk movement um, or people who like the steampunk look. Um, but I would say that you don't have to like steampunk to like this. I mean, you, certainly if you're a steampunky kind of person and you like that, this is going to fit into that. But if you just like cool clocks and something different, this is for you. By the way, today I'm wearing Tempest Fugit. That is a shout out to James Henderson, our good friend who actually did cover the Berlin Wall Watch and has a blog about watches. Um, what am I forgetting, Abe, since I'm talking to you so much during this show anyway? I think I covered everything. Um, so... There it is. Let it be Russian. Um, actually, in this case, Ukrainian. Uh, I'm only going to talk about this today, so fairly short show. Uh, I would tell you to not hesitate to get one of these. I just, it, 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 there's just no way. I know our customer base. There's no way. Look at that again. It's so cool. That you're not going to get totally geeked up about this. That you're not going to enjoy looking at this. That you're not going to want to play with it. It, they are just wicked cool. The, your, your question isn't going to be whether you want to get one. Your question is going to be which of the three configurations do you like the most. So in the meantime, I am Craig Hester with R2AWatches.com. And we are again going to be trying to get back to uh, a steady weekly uh, show at this time. And uh, by the way, I will be I'm heading back to Switzerland next month. So there may be one week where the show where the show won't be live. I might have to do a can show or something um, next month, not next week. Did I say next week? It doesn't matter. Next month, whatever. Um, and that, I guess that's really it. I'm Craig Hester with R2AWatches.com, the Pramsius Watch Company, Vostok Europe, and again, a whole host of other things that make me sound more important than I am. And until next time, keep watching.